Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Everything RV by Pat. I uh, want to introduce you to this inverter generator that I just received from Champion. I purchased it. This is in no way sponsored by Champion, well, the, with the exception that they sent me a shirt for doing the last video that I did. But this is a 2000 watt um, inverter generator and this is the unboxing and initial setup and review I'll uh, get back with you in just a second when I get the box open stick around A funnel. Always use that. Piece of cardboard. So there you have it, unboxed. Um, and like I said, I'm not sponsored by them, except for they sent me this t-shirt when I did my last video. Okay, so anyway, basics of this, pull string, knob, it's all the way over to choke. That's the run. That is running without gasoline and that is all the way off. Basically what this does is this cuts the flow of gasoline to the engine <clears throat> to stop the, uh, stop the gasoline from running down in there. Uh, so let's say you're going to uh, shut it off for a few weeks or, or whatever. You want to run this and then the engine will kill itself and then just turn it to off when it runs out of gasoline. Um, anyway, that's, that's the first side. On this side, the, the obvious, one of the big reasons that I got this is that it has the square um, plugs to plug in to work in tandem or to, to work in parallel rather with another generator, another champion generator. It just so happens I have another champion generator. It happens to be the 3400 watt. Um, up here you have the eco button uh, and then the reset button for uh, any electrical fault. Under here, two uh, standard 120 volt outlets, and they are fused at 20 amps. This one, these fuses are covered. I like that. They're they're covered with a piece of plastic to keep any weather out. Uh, down here is the grounding um, pin, and then a typical cigarette cigar lighter type uh, 12 volt socket. this side we'll get into that in just a minute but that's the way you service it uh, up here on the on the arm or on the handle is some uh, warning tags reminders and back here there's your exhaust this is where the bulk of the noise is going to come when you when you run these you want to point this away from where you want the noise to be uh, so oftentimes I go camping and I see people uh, facing their exhaust either at themselves or at me uh, in their in my campground I don't like that either but you, you want to make sure that this is pointed away um, but it's a suitcase easy to lift easy to handle okay let me take this off and we'll get inside and see what it looks like all right opening it up Okay, what was what was hanging up these little pins they snap in 
held in by tabs plus the pins snapped in. Warning sticker, make sure that you know that it does not have oil in it when shipped and you are to put new oil in when you ship it. <coughs> Excuse me, pretty simple. The uh, first fill, they recommend only 40 uh, or 400 milliliters. I'm using a brand that I'm not going to tell, but it was the lowest priced brand. Uh, this is only going to be in there for five hours. Uh, it does say do not use synthetic oil on your first fill. ginger on this and, and you must use 10w30 apologize it's windy i was too excited to get this done to wait for a nice calm day that should just about do it yep now when checking the oil don't screw the the um, oil cap all the way in just put it to the to the edge of the threads, pull it back out. That's how you check to see if it's full. Um, there's a full description in the in, in the uh, manual. Okay, so there's that. Like I was saying, take a quick look. Shows you how to fill it, where to check it. 10W30. That was the tag that took off the handle. All right, let's put some gas in it. Start it up. One of the really neat things that it talked about was this little light. Um, it's not dark right now, but <coughs> you might be able to see that that's on. It leans forward, shines into the gas hole or the gas tank hole when you um, are fueling after dark. We've been there, done that. I understand that for sure. Just push it in, push it back out. I think there's a battery in there. I'm not sure if it's recharged by the motor or if it's uh, just one that you have to replace. But I don't anticipate that going dead anytime in the near future. Uh, now let's talk about this gas cap. First off, when it is closed like so, let me see, make sure I'm getting it filled. When it's closed like this, there is no air coming into the gas tank. That also means there's no gas fumes coming out. Um, and when you are traveling, you make sure that this is to off. Okay, when you are running this, you want to turn it to the on position so that air can go into the tank as gas drains out. It's a gravity flow gas tank, so it's got to have something to come in. If you run it and you don't have this um, open, it'll suck down like, a, like an aluminum beer can going <laughs> if you're sucking out of it. So it's, it, it would crush inside the 1.1 the gallon gas tank will crush and that's not something that you want uh, to have happen anyway so just so that you know make sure that you have it to on when you when you are running it all right I'm gonna put some uh, gas in now inside of this there's a filter just a little filter it keeps all the debris from getting down in the tank where this sits in the tank, you do not want to overfill past the orange line there. And every time you want to inspect the filter, make sure there's no debris in there. So there's already a little piece of plastic before we even started. overfilling it so we'll leave it at that no click just nice and tight making sure this is on all right here we go YouTube you're here witnessing the first running 
I said we're going to turn it all the way to choke it. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to just move the engine a little bit, not trying to start it up. Get a little of the oil on the components. My high school uh, small engine teacher made sure that we did that before we started it up when we built our small engines in, in high school. So I'm going to I'm going to continue that practice. All right. Uh, now, turn it to choke. And there we have it. And it's already on eco mode. There's as loud as it is. Uh, we are point blank range. I'm going to do some screenshots of the uh, uh, of the decimal meter. It's also on the same filming device, which is my iPhone. Um, and, I'll, and I'll give you some ideas of how loud it is. On this very windy day, without the machine running, the ambient noise was 57.5 decibels. With the machine running directly at the exhaust, the noise level was 90 decibels, and 30 feet away, directly behind it, the noise level was 71 decibels. Okay, I moved it to the ground to uh, check the decibels because doing it in the back of the truck was uh, an unfair overrated reading because uh, the back of the truck just echoed everything outward. Um, anyway, it's on the floor on the ground on a concrete surface next to the RV by the truck uh, just to give you a little bit better idea. Directly above it while it was on the ground was 77.5 decibels and then 30 feet away was at 65.7 decibels. There you have it folks. There's my brand new Champion 2000 watt inverter. 48 pounds with a gallon of gas in it, 45 without. Pretty cool. I got a couple more videos that I'll do with this. I'm gonna stay, stay, or stay tuned to the channel because in, in the upcoming days you're gonna see this hooked in tandem with in parallel with my other generator, the one that I did a review for already. And you're gonna see this particular generator. Um, under load test uh, in comparison to other generators and, and regular electricity just to see how it works. That concludes this episode of Everything RV by Pat. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Now get out and enjoy the world around you.